by complementing your good deeds with learning and donating. Presenting to you a series of mini webinars with four accomplished speakers over the next four Fridays in this blessed month of Ramadan. Engage with our speakers as they share their knowledge on four not so popular key areas of Ramadan, which are wakaf, zakah, donation, and blessings. So for wakaf, how wakaf can transform your Ramadan this year and all the other years. For today's topic, Wakaf, the secret edge to a fuller Ramadan, our speaker will first present, and then we will then allow the speaker to answer questions from the viewers verbally or in the chat box. Dr. Shamsia is the CEO and Director of Pergas Investment Holdings, PIH. Previously, she has served as a Senior Vice President at Bank Mamalat Malaysia, the CEO of Al Bukhari Foundation, and as the Deputy Director of Asset Development at MUIS. Dr. Shamsia was listed as one of the top 20 most influential women in Islamic finance by Cambridge IFA. Dr. Shamsia also obtained her PhD in Islamic studies from Durham University. With decades of academic and professional expertise in the Islamic finance field, both locally in Singapore and abroad, it is my pleasure to welcome Dr. Shamsia to share the secret edge to a fuller Ramadan. Thank you, Ikhman. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi. Rabbi shrahli sadri wa yasirli amri wa ufatan bin lisani yaqab. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. We are in uh, the holy month of Ramadan and thank you to uh, Ethis and uh, Global Sadaka and also uh, Islamic Finance SG, at SG for organizing this talk in the month of Ramadan. Uh, it has been a very, um, last year was a difficult Ramadan in the sense that uh, there was a lot of uh, ibadah that uh, was disrupted in that sense. Because uh, most of us cannot go to the mosque. Uh, we are deprived of uh, Taraway that we have been used to to go to the mosque. And then, um, yeah, a lot of uh, the things that we, we, we have been accustomed to be doing, like uh, a Fajr, uh, Jama'ah, uh, prayers in the mosque, has, has not been able to be, you know, uh, to, be, uh, uh, to be practiced. Uh, however, I think um, that doesn't stop us to do it at home. And there's, uh, there's, there's uh, this holy month of Ramadan, uh, as you know, that uh, whatever we do, whatever deeds that we perform, uh, it will be multifold uh, in terms of uh, the rewards that we'll be uh, getting. So um, I think the first, uh, just uh, just to uh, base on the topic that we are talking about, Wakaf in the month of Ramadan, usually, Zakat is, you know, is the, the, the famous topic that will be uh, asked during the month of that because of the Zakat Fitri and Zakat Hatri. So I think I just want uh, the first session as an introduction uh, to state what is the difference between uh, Wakaf, uh, donations, and Zakat. So in, in charity in Islam, when, when we talk about uh, Charity, when we talk about donation, we talk about sadaka, there's two types basically. One is uh, voluntary uh, and one is obligatory. So the obligatory, as we know, is the zakat tul fitri, or, or in Malay we call it zakat fitra, and the second is the zakat harta, or zakat on wealth, or zakat tul man. Uh, that is obligatory and it has to meet a certain condition. I think the second uh, topic of this, uh, I mean the second uh, topic of this webinar, uh, you will delve on that with another speaker. So my part, I will talk about uh, Wakaf. And Wakaf uh, is under the category of the normal sadaqah, that means the voluntary sadaqah. So, uh, but it is perpetuating. So what we, uh, usually what we term it as sadaqah tul jariya, because it is perpetual, it is uh, continuous. Sadaqatul Jaria is continuous. So we have normal donation, people give charity, uh, people use the term sometimes infaq, 
infarct as in uh, also in uh, terms where it is uh, considered also as charity, the uh, terminology as charity. So these are some of, uh, and then we have HIBA, HIBA where you give, where let's say you give, uh, you give somebody a car, you give somebody a bag, that is a HIBA. So it is a gift. All these are under the category of uh, sadaka. So it is not uh, compulsory, it is voluntary. Uh, what I will, uh, just to make a bit of understanding on all this. So uh, in, in, in Islam, in Islam, this uh, we call it Islamic economics and the financing of the Muslim community. So uh, how do we finance the Muslim community? So these are some of the things that uh, we have the tools, like the zakat, it is, it is a tool of financing the community. Uh, and then we have the work. It is an endowment tool. I mean, you, 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 you restrain the capital and, and you give away the whatever the income that is uh, received from the capital. And then you have uh, things like, you know, the Baitumal. So in, in an Isla Islamic financing system, you have the Baitumal. This is where, you know, uh, all the um, general charity, uh, all the businesses, if you're, you, you engage in businesses, in investment, so whatever income from that uh, particular uh, funds will go towards uh, financing the society. So you have the Baitumal, you have in Singapore, for example, we have the Madrasa Fund, we have uh, the Zakat Fund, and then we have the Moss Building Fund, which we can also categorize as the Waka. Okay, I just want to um, to explain a little bit about wakaf and how it actually uh, originated. Okay, so um, wakaf is the, its origin is actually it comes from the hadith uh, where Ibn Umar reported uh, where he got a land in Khaybar. Khaybar is somewhere in Medina, so that was uh, you know very famous for its uh, dates plantation, kurma huh? plantation. So he came to, because he got a huge um, plantation of uh, dates in, in, in that particular land. So he came to uh, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and asked him to advise about how he want to do the charity. The Prophet said, if you like, make the property inalienable. So the first criteria is that the property must be inalienable and give the profit from it to charity. So what, what, uh, what it means is that you cannot, uh, the property must be, uh, must be, you know, cannot be sold. So whatever the income from that property, you have to give it uh, as charity. It goes on to say that Umar gave it away as arms. So he gave it as charity arms that the land itself would not be sold cannot be sold. So the whatever property, you cannot sell it. You cannot inherit or you cannot donate. So uh, if it's already wakaf, you cannot do fara'id on that particular property or on that particular uh, assets that you have. And then, uh, or you want to donate. Uh, uh, let's say your parents wakaf a certain, you know, then you say, no, 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 I want to donate to another, another cause. Then, that is not uh, allowed because it, the the don't the, the wakif has already created a wakaf for it. And who are the beneficiaries? So in this hadith, it mentioned he gave it away for the poor, the relatives, the slave, and jihad. Jihad that means for the cause of Allah uh, to the travelers and the guests. So if you look at the kind of charity um, uh, in, in those days, uh, uh, during uh, Rasulullah's time, and also we, if you look at the Quran, we mentioned in Surah at Tawbah uh, about the uh, distribution of zakat to the eight asnaf. It mentioned about the poor entity, it mentioned about the Ibn Sabil, which is the stranded Muslims. So uh, it is, uh, if you look at the, the way charity is done, it is always the poor, it is uh, people who are traveling, the, the, the stranded. Uh, are very high in that list. Huh? And then uh, the slaves, that time was, you know, they were slaves. Relatives, your next of kin, your next of kin. So that is also propagated to give it to them. 
Okay, so that is the beneficiary. So if you look at how it originated from this hadith, it gives you the whole concept of wakaf. The whole concept of wakaf. Wakaf cannot be sold. Wakaf cannot be donated. But I will explain why uh, when we say cannot be sold, why are some wakaf being sold? Uh, it, is, it is not sold, but it is exchanged. So that is different. You sell, but you exchange with another asset. So it's called it's take down. Uh, and how it is, and then it, it goes on to mention how would it shall be managed. And it will not be held against him who administers it if he consumes some of its yield in an appropriate manner or fits a friend who does not enrich himself by means of it. So what it means is that uh, the one who administers can consume some of its yield, meaning it, they can be paid. They can be paid, they can take some of the uh, administration fee and so on, administering fee. So these are the trustees. Administrators, we call it Nutawali, we can call it as the trustees, we can call them as the Nazir. So in Wakaf, these are some of the terminology used to administer the Wakaf. So, uh, and it goes to say that he should not enrich himself by means of it. Meaning, uh, it cannot be so... Um, it cannot be uh, ostentatious, it cannot be over the norm in that sense. So, you know, uh, as, as a guide, uh, Amil in, in Zakat, uh, one eighth of it can be paid to Amil. So that is the guide of the way you want to administer in terms of this administration fee. Uh. Okay, so one, one eighth is, uh, one eighth is uh, equivalent to 12.5%. So that, that is some of the, you know, uh, the benchmark that people use. Okay, and then uh, I want to go into what what is the uh, waka which is defined in this uh, in this region. So um, in in Singapore itself, we have the administration of Muslim law. Act. So uh, there actually uh, it defines what waka is, and it is the uh, it is defined as the permanent dedication by a Muslim. So in Singapore, uh, only Muslims can create a waka, but that is under the law. Because for the non-Muslim, uh, they are not subject to this law. Uh, for any movable or immovable property, and for any purpose recognized by the Muslim law, it's pious, so it has to be pious, religious, or charitable. So coming back to uh, the status of whether non-Muslim can create waka, other countries they allow. Uh, countries like Kuwait and so on, the Middle East, they allow because uh, they are the majority Muslim. So they encourage those non-Muslims to sort of create an endowment for waka. But uh, because uh, we in Singapore, we have a different uh, set of uh, laws and regulations. So it is only... Uh, uh, on the, 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 the part of the Muslim. So, um, okay, so then what are the types of wakaf that we have? We have several types of wakaf. We have wakaf arm, we have wakaf khas, we have wakaf kairi, and we have wakaf zuri. What does all this mean? Uh, there are wakaf which is dedicated for a particular purpose. So that is what we call wakaf khas. For example, for masjid, Masjid uh, at taqwa Masjid Muhajiri, Masjid al Fala. So that is a particular wakaf, which is wakaf has. Wakaf arm can be you know, for general charity and so on. And uh, we have also wakaf family. In Singapore, we still keep wakaf family. So let's say for the example of, for example, of wakaf uh, say, uh, from the al Sagaf family. So uh, there is family members which you know uh, is created as a also as a beneficiary. So this is what we call. So wakaf is not. That's why just now when uh, I gave the example of how uh, Saidina Umar uh, created his wakaf, uh, he mentioned about giving to the next of kin and so on, relatives and so on. So this is where wakaf you can actually give it to your family members. So you can put in the beneficiaries. And uh, that's why Wakaf is, is, is uh, one of the um, branch of charity where it is very flexible in that sense. And it, it creates uh, 
it creates a system where you can actually um, uh, mention what type of uh, charity that you want to give. So uh, it is uh, uh, up to the wakif how how they want the charity to be, you know to be distributed. And um, if you look at the um, yeah, and then that's that's one of the uh, the origin of wakaf. Of course, there's other you know other mentioned that uh, wakaf uh, originated uh, during even as as back as Nabi Dawud alaihi salam, where he created the shield of the you know uh, armor. So that is they say is a is is a wakaf, and then they say the first Kaaba is also wakaf, and then uh, there's the 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 uh, the mosque uh, where Rasulullah uh, passed through, and they say that is a wakaf in Medina. So, um, but the most famous is the wakaf of um, Sayyidina Ibn Umar, uh, Sayyidina Radiallahu An, uh, who created the wakaf in Khaybar. And um, there are, of course, other hadith on wakaf, like uh, if, we, if we know about this very famous hadith. Uh, when a person dies, all their deeds end, except three things. First is a continuing charity. This is called Sadaqat Ujjariya, which is what we call the Wakaf. And then second is beneficial knowledge and a child who prays for them. So these are the three things that will uh, make whatever your deeds also continue when you are no longer uh, this world. So it is an investment in the Yawmul Akhirah. So that, that, that is what is very unique, uh, very um, different when you do Wakaf because it is a continuous charity. So because when you are no longer in this world, these are the things that will continue as your, uh, as the deeds that will benefit you in the day after. So, uh, when when uh, when you look at this, um, there are no actually there are no specific uh, injunction in the Quran where it mentioned the word uh, This uh, is all in the hadith, but in the Quran you can look at uh, a lot of the verses on charity, on sadaqa, on infaq, on zakat. Uh, this this are all charity uh, branch of charity. So. Um, and one of the very important things that we should uh, we should uh, you know uh, understand is that to be a good Muslim, it's if you look at even the uh, I, I was just told by um, a son of my uh, friend uh, that uh, he uh, until today he does not realize that you know uh, he has been like the five pillars of Islam, but the zakat uh, on wealth. They, he has stopped to fail and uh, this is something that uh, a lot of them uh, has uh, has not you know uh, is not aware of the importance of uh, of charity because um, it is not about Habdu uh, Allah it's also Habdu Nas so charity and the branch of Wakaf and the branch of all this Zakat it is uh, about uh, financing the community. It is about the society. How, in an economic sense, uh, you you have uh, you created social justice. Because Wakaf can create uh, things like mosques, things like even okay. I give an example like a very uh, famous Wakaf that was created back then by um, Siti uh, Zubaida, which is the Abbasid princess. Uh, who is the wife of uh, Khalifa Harun al Rashid? She created uh, the road from Baghdad all the way to Makkah. And she, she created ca caravan sarai where they can stop the, you know, to, to make their pilgrimage all the way to Makkah. So this, these are some of the good things that uh, you know uh, Wakaf is created. Besides, it also functions like a government uh, spending, expenditure, a fiscal policy to create uh, all this infrastructure as well. So the, 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 the many helping hands, we call it the community coming in and helping build the, the infrastructure, the needs of the society. 
uh, and we have you know we have a lot of uh, university even university al azhar is from the uh, the wakaf and we have uh, hospitals wakaf hospital we have so many uh, wakaf if you look at you know histories and even now so this these are the good things that uh, you know uh, this this type of charity that it can be lasting because in other donations you give one time and that's it but of course it should complement i'm not saying that uh only wakaf is superior than zakat and so on zakat is wajib and it is uh it is a fiscal policy where every year you know it's just like a government tax system and expenditure system where every year you have to spend it zakat you have to spend it 100% you have to spend within the year but wakaf it is a long term it is something which is sustainable so for for a community to be sustainable they need a sustainable income so this is where wakaf complements all the different uh, charity system all the different financial system in the islamic economy so uh, this 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 uh, uh just a time check i'm, I'm good huh? okay uh, these are some of the um, some of the features and and uh, the benefit and also the the superiority of uh, creating a wakaf and uh, just just to also uh, give some uh, examples where uh, the one that uh, currently I'm I'm doing with uh, Perkas Investment it is called the Perkas Endowment Legacy Fund. Uh, for the ulama and uh, this is an endowment fund so how it works is that uh, previously people usually donated through properties and so on we have many wakaf in singapore where um, the rich philanthropy in the in the earlier days uh, gave um, assets and so on uh, to to create wakaf so you have the like of uh, masjid sultan where there are many wakaf maybe about six or seven wakaf which is created for the benefit of the sultan mosque and if you look at all uh, the properties at, at the norbridge road musra street and some of all this uh, around the area whatever rental it gives is is for the benefit of uh, masjid sultan so these are some of the very um, you know the rich philanthropies they, they created this but now um, we we don't we we don't have that luxury anymore. Property in Singapore is is I would say crazy expensive. You are looking at sub thousand six thousand seven per square foot of property uh, prices. So it's it's not very easy to get people just donating um, their property, create a worker. So what we do is uh, there's a lot of now uh, creating cash worker. Uh, is itself also have that uh, wakaf ilmu, a cash wakaf where they can uh, they can donate uh, in terms of cash. That this cash will then be invested. So in in Perkas also we do have an endowment fund where uh, where this uh, cash is used to buy properties and the properties uh, will uh, will generate the rental yield and beside properties of course uh, there are other investment uh, assets that we can buy which is sharia compliant uh, things like suku and so on so the income from there uh, will benefit the organization's uh, activities such as uh, developing the asatiza uh, doing scholarships and developing the career, the religious curriculum so um, so if you look at uh, all this, um, the way Wakaf is structured, it is not only uh, to create, you know, uh, it's also, if you look at the whole system, it's creating uh, value, value for the assets of the community because you invested and you created, um, you are also actually uh, propagating some of the Islamic uh, investment because once you have investment you have to put in a sharia compliant investment uh, is actually propagated so this this uh, wakaf or some call it like muslim trust or that 
these are, are contributing to the economy indirectly and it's also contributing towards the uh, Sharia, uh, financial Sharia, you know, uh, compliant uh, tools and investment. So it, 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 uh, it trickles into many um, advantages and benefit. It, creates, uh, it also creates employment because you invest in the asset, you buy assets, uh, it's, it's generating economic activities. So I would say that um, uh, do, do keep that in mind, especially when you do, uh, because uh, uh, I'm also involved in the in, in will writing, in creation of will. So one of the way that they can create wakaf is to wasya. So put uh, some, thoughts into putting aside some charity um, before you know you leave this world and put it in the in your will so that uh, some of this can be created as a as a waka deeds that can be uh, continuous uh, after you leave this world inshallah so um, I'm not sure I have covered uh, everything uh, Mr. Chairman so if if I can uh, end here. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Shamsia, for the knowledge shared. Um, now, uh, we would like to answer some of the questions from our viewers. I believe we have one of the viewers who has raised his hands. So I see uh, Muhammad uh, Iqbal. Have you got a question for Dr. Shamsia? Maybe if you can unmute yourself. <laughs> Uh, uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, loud and clear. Proceed. Okay, okay, great. Because currently I'm doing my grocery at the same time listening to to to, uh, to this webinar. Uh, but <laughs> but thank you so much, uh, Miss uh, Miss uh, Samsia for providing us all this knowledge. Uh, my question, uh, it's a I think it's a short one. Uh, in Singapore, I understand that uh, Islam, uh, the the rulings around Islamic finance isn't as strong as other Muslim majority countries. So I'm wondering if a wakaf were to be set up over here, uh, will it be under the same uh, rules and regulation of conventional law, just as a trust is, or do uh, or is there really a, uh, a Sharia compliant regulation that wakaf uh, is administered under? Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Mr. Iqbal. Yeah, a very good question. Yes, uh, under the Administration of Muslim Law Act, uh, there is a section under Wakaf, section 50, 58, uh, 56, all the way to section 60, I think 65. Uh, it it, it uh, deals with how uh, Wakaf should be administered. Uh, but uh, of course, it doesn't uh, spell out very detailed uh, in, in terms of in, in investment. But as you know, yeah, because it is uh, Islamic trust, so whatever investment that we have to put in should be invested in a Sharia compliant manner. So, uh, of course, uh, there, are, there are internal guidelines as to how the wakaf should be administered. So, uh, there, there, are, there are rules and regulations. That's why just now I mentioned about the definition of wakaf in the AMLA. Uh, that only Muslims, and then it has to be, you know, uh, it has to be um, permanent dedication. So once you create a wakaf, you cannot revoke it. That means um, I say, okay, I want to create a wakaf, and then after 10 years, I say I want to take it back. So you can't. So it's a permanent dedication. So this, this uh, all spell out in the administration of Muslim law. So uh, in a way, we, we are in Singapore, it's uh, secular in nature. Uh, we do follow some of this, uh, but I won't say we have 100% uh, opportunity like some of our, our you know, uh, near, near, nearby country like in Malaysia because they have more, more varieties of uh, Islamic finance instruments. For example, I do investment for Wakaf, let's say Wakaf asset. Uh, I have, I, I, I can still buy fixed income by buying support and so on. The choice is uh, quite limited in Singapore. The choice is quite limited uh, because we don't have as many uh, demand for it. So the supply is not there. Supply for such issue is not there. But inshallah, if the worker funds get very big, 
uh, I'm sure they can always supply some of the Islamic instruments out there. Thank you again, Dr. Shamsia. Anyone with other questions from the viewers or you have a bit too shy to ask verbally, please please feel free to even type your questions. Most welcome, Iqbal. I'll allow for a few more seconds for anyone to have any last minute questions. Or do we have any questions from uh, the Facebook? I'm, I'm not monitoring the Facebook. Do we have any questions from them, Facebook Live? Okay, I think, uh, you know, Alhamdulillah, I believe Dr. Shamsia, you have shared quite a bit of information, so I think uh, they are just probably digesting it, and perhaps you'll have <laughs> questions in the next session. So anyway, thank you once again, Dr. Shamsia, for sharing your knowledge on the importance of Waka. This is definitely the best month to perform good deeds, and may Allah accept all of our good deeds. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, for next week's session, we will be focusing on Dhaka, and the topic will be Zakah, the success tax. However, it will be on the same day, Friday, and it will be every Friday in Ramadan. But next week's session will be at 5 o'clock, 5 p.m. So we look forward to seeing you again next week. And just to share, from the commitment fee, a portion will be donated to Global Sadaqah's beneficiaries. But on top of that, you'll get lifelong access to the recordings of the, these webinars. So do follow Islamic Finance at Singapore, IF at SG on their social media platforms. And I also invite all of you to visit Global Sadaqah's newly launched Ramadan website at globalsadaqah.com. And there are many wakaf based campaigns for you to choose from. So thank you again, once again for your time. We hope that the webinar was beneficial for all of you. It was definitely beneficial for me. We look forward to seeing you next week at the next webinar. And thank you once again, Dr. Shamsia. Thank you, everyone. Have a great weekend. And of course, have a great Ramadan. Ana Allahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaykum assalam. Thank you.